Persons Action Group is the publisher of the monthly Senior Voice newspaper and the 2016-2017 Directory for Older Alaskans, available by calling 1-800-478-1059 or online at SeniorVoiceAlaska.com. Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. If you're interested in serving on your local federal subsistence regional advisory council, the deadline to apply is Friday, February 3rd. Email subsistence at fws.gov for more information. The National Weather Service. Hello again, and thanks for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. Satellite, or warnings first, uh, winter storm warning continues uh, this evening here across Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula, and that's uh, through tonight for those uh, 30, 50 mile an hour wind gusts and some additional snow, blowing snow, visibility's down to a half mile or less at times, and then that condition also extends uh, all the way up here to the northwest coast, Noatak Valley area, especially out along the coast uh, until tomorrow afternoon as those conditions improve here from south to north. And there's also a, a winter storm warning out for the Susitna Valley west of the Parks Highway uh, for snow, looking at 12 to 19 inches uh, through two, or for, that begins uh, later tonight after midnight, I think about 1 a.m. and continues through the day on Tuesday. And again, 12 to 19 inches of snow, heaviest west of the Parks Highway. And actually, that's actually where the warning is and uh, heaviest amounts up toward the Alaska Range, lighter amounts off to the east. In fact, uh, areas like the Manuska Valley, Palmer, uh, may not get much at all. Otherwise, satellite imagery today uh, in the east here, a few clouds uh, sliding down the southeast coast with fair and some clearing conditions back to the north and that extends here along the uh, coast. And then this storm system moving south to north in the flow spreading first cirrus and then gradually thickening up the clouds uh, here from uh, Cook Inlet on up through the interior, precipitation down along the Seward Peninsula, Kodiak Island, rain, warmer conditions, uh, mixed precipitation today moving into the Bristol Bay area with pretty gusty winds through here. And then the uh, colder temperatures pick up the snow and blowing snow extending northward there from, uh, well, the Cuscombe Valley all the way up in the warning areas there to the northwest coast. And then behind the front, conditions improving uh, fairly well. As you can see, uh, clouds breaking out, winds lighter, snow showers, shower conditions moving in over the eastern Aleutians of the Alaska Peninsula. Low center tracking northward, a uh, bigger break to the west, and then the outer edge of the next of the cloud shield that's associated with the next uh, pretty good storm that's going to be rolling into the Aleutians and Bering Sea with some storm force winds. On the chart today, uh, this afternoon, roughly about 3 p.m., this is approximately the location of the frontal boundary pushing eastward there. So the strongest winds and uh, heaviest snow and blowing snow in advance of that off to the east and then much better back to the west here along the coast on out into the Bering Sea. Trough here with some uh, snow showers, also a trough across the eastern Aleutians with some uh, snow showers or mixed rain and snow shower conditions and rain, Kodiak Island, we had rain and snow or snow changing the rain in the Homer area. And that same thing going on over Bristol Bay. Snow increasing here along the eastern slopes of the Western Alaska Range. And that'll continue, as I mentioned, into tonight and tomorrow, especially east of the mountains 
in the Susitna Valley west of the Parks Highway. Snow and blowing snow ahead of the front there all the way up to the uh, northwest coast into the Brooks Range, but lee side of the Brooks Range, uh, not much in the way of snow at all. Just uh, breezy conditions, high pressure now shifting eastward, 1,040 millibars there over the Yukon, but not uh, really producing much wind with a uh, slack gradient across the southeast coast there. A few snow showers here drifting off uh, as that cloud area and the upper disturbance uh, continues to slide off to the southeast. But again, the uh, flow here south to north carrying all the moisture northward initially, but the pattern gradually shifting eastward. So that's going to allow a weakened front in tonight or it'll weaken, especially wind wise there, but holding on to enough moisture to keep that uh, heavy snowfall in forecast for the Susitna Valley. Mixed conditions, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Prince William, Kenai Peninsula and Prince William Sound with uh, probably rain on the light side, Cordova, uh, heavier though for the uh, Seward southern coast of the peninsula and down across Kodiak Island front kind of uh, hanging up in that area. In fact, it moves to about this position and then tends to stall. Back to the west, lighter winds, mostly from the southwest or west-southwest, scattered snow showers, uh, Cuscoma Valley, back to the Nalado Hills, and then mostly off the coast there, so not much additional precipitation in the forecast or expected for the, uh, say, Bethel Mountain Village area there and conditions improving across the Seward Peninsula as that whole mess shifts off and uh, hammers the Western Brooks Range area on out to Point Lay, on down to uh, Point Hope, and then uh, Kivalina, some snow, but conditions improving through the Bering Strait. Farther west, weak high pressure coming into the central Aleutians and Bering Sea, that ahead of the next storm out there to the west that's going to bring gale and storm force winds into the Aleutians out there. At least gales, possibly storm force winds here. You can see same sort of pattern, but again, this system farther out to the west than the previous one, but a pretty good gradient there. Some winds will be increasing uh, over Atka, but the rain staying to the west. Nice conditions here as that high pressure ridge shifts eastward over the uh, Bering Sea, Perbloffs, Eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. Definitely a break in the conditions tomorrow. And again, that front uh, right through here really weakens in this uh, portion of the uh, boundary there, but uh, weak low pressure area continued to forecast to form still at 1,026 millibars, so very weak and not much of a gradient at all, but the leftover moisture will keep a uh, chance of snow. Uh, Cuscombe Valley on down into northeast Bristol Bay and uh, up across the Kenai Peninsula. Again, possibly mixed here along the coast, Prince William Sound and little if any precipitation for Cook Inlet, especially Eastern Cook Inlet, Anchor Point, Palmer, and the Matanuska Valley. And again, uh, you got to be west of the Parks Highway. That's where the heaviest snow will occur. And really not much up in the interior, especially the, uh, from about Tanana eastward. You may not see anything more than just uh, passing clouds. And offshore flow keeps the central and eastern Arctic coast in the VFR flying weather. And then a little bit of shower activity of mixed variety there for the uh, North Gulf Coast should stay fair here over the Panhandle, though, uh, especially over the central and southern areas. You could see a fair amount of sunshine again tomorrow afternoon in those areas. And then for Wednesday, uh, that low pressure stays out to the west, tracks northward there, carrying most of the energy with it. And then you've got just a weakening front sort of just uh, slipping on eastward there. That'll bring some rain and uh, wind, main gradient right through here. So, uh, not too bad on the winds uh, across the central Aleutians, but uh, probably see some gales here off to the east. Winds on the increase with the Perbloffs and just uh, some scattered snow showers out along the southwest coast, maybe the southern coast of the Seward Peninsula, but really nothing significant as uh, strong high pressure now builds into the uh, northern interior. There are 1,045 millibars and that'll basically control the weather across all of the interior. This area of moisture tomorrow that's uh, over south central Alaska will move northeastward and dissipate throughout the day, leaving behind just a few flurries in the afternoon over the extreme eastern areas. Uh, fair along the North Gulf Coast, still a chance of some moisture, mixed rain or snow showers, very light here. Kenai Peninsula, maybe down to Kodiak Island, nothing significant and looks mostly clear here for the Panhandle with uh, fairly light winds. And temperatures down that way this afternoon in the 30s, uh, 
28 Skagway, mid 30s here over the northern areas, uh, 32 over at uh, Wrangell, 36 for, uh, let's see, that's a net, 32 for Cordova, Copper River Basin, temperatures ranging from minus 2 at Gunsight to 15 above at McCarthy, Toke, 10 degrees below zero, but Delta up to 13, then back down below zero at Fairbanks and Tannen up to 14. Uh, let's see, Bettles, uh, 10, Fort Yukon, 1, minus 17, Arctic Village, otherwise Dead Horse, 5 above, 23 point lay, 29 in Kotzebue, Nome, 31 degrees, McGrath at 30, and St. Mary's right at the freeze mark, as was Bethel, and about that all the way out to the coastline. Uh, Wales at 30, same thing for Savunga. Mid 30s for the Privlofs and Unalaska, mid to upper 30s elsewhere out to the west. And then uh, 41 at Sand Point, otherwise a peninsula here on up into the King Salmon area in the mid to upper 30s. And for the lows tonight, uh, below zero in the more clearer areas here, still under the influence of the uh, high pressure in the Yukon. And then with the clouds and wind moving in, uh, of course, temperatures are much milder to the west, all in the 20s here, right up into the Noatak Valley. And teens to mid 20s for the Panhandle, lower 30s for the Aleutians. And on to the highs for tomorrow, again, contrasted west to east here with the coolest conditions. Uh, anywhere from zero to 10 above in the east, but everyone rising above zero. And uh, upper 20s, lower 30s here over the western areas from Bristol Bay right up to Kotzebue Sound. And then 19 or near 20 for the Arctic coast. And again, lower 20s for the north slope, upper 20s to upper 30s for the Panhandle. And for flying weather tomorrow morning, areas of IFR here in the west, otherwise marginal, VFR breaking out for the Bering Sea and much of the uh, Aleutians here from Atka on up to the Alaska Peninsula. IFR, of course, uh, western Susitna Valley, right up to the crest of the Alaska Range, on down to the Aleutian Range and the North Gulf Coast, which by tomorrow afternoon remains here along the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, across Whittier, and down into the Kenai Peninsula and that zone cutting across Cook Inlet. But again, lowest conditions, eastern slopes of the Alaska Range right up uh, to the central areas there. So windy IFR southern approach, IFR here across the Brooks Range, back down to the Seward Peninsula, eastern Arctic coast maybe, and uh, another batch IFR sliding into the western Aleutians. Passes, Anatovic, IFR, lowest conditions south side, same forecast for Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, and again, rainy as well, marginal, windy IFR, lowest conditions, southern entrance. Isabel looking marginal. Mentasta, though, a pretty good chance of being VFR. And Tanita, occasionally marginal, otherwise VFR. And for Portage, uh, call it IFR, especially on the east entrance. For Chilkoot and White, uh, starting, out mar or starting out VFR, possibly becoming marginal late in the day, not guaranteed, may stay VFR the entire day. And then for uh, freezing levels, uh, surface now up to St. Matthew Island through Bristol Bay, and then the usual up along the coast, down into the Panhandle, 2,000 feet south of the Queen Charlotte's, but edging its way up toward the western Aleutians. And the winds aloft, or the icing tomorrow, above about 5,000 feet here, Copper River Basin, south of the mountains down to Kodiak Island, another batch up there over the northwest interior, mostly above 3,000 feet, and then some more slipping on into the far western Aleutians. Winds aloft now, jet stream, 33,000 feet, big ridge of high pressure through here, again shifting eastward uh, tonight and tomorrow. Southerly flow 70 knots right into southern Alaska, strong northwest jet there with a sharp trough right through here, another ridge, the next storm moving into the western Bering Sea. 9,000 feet, high pressure just off the coast there of the Panhandle. Pretty light flow here, southern southeast Alaska. Southerly is 20 to 30 knots, but uh, with that sharp trough right through here, uh, comes northerly or northwest, 15 to 20, not too strong there from the Alaska Peninsula. And then southwest flow 20 to 30 knots, turning southerly out toward the Arctic coast. Much stronger winds again out over the Aleutians, 50 to 70 knots there with that next uh, intense storm moving in. 3,000 feet, same pattern, 40 to 65 knot winds here coming in with that storm. Lighter under the high pressure ridge, northwest 20 to 25, turning southeast 30 to 35 with the western Gulf of Alaska. Light winds, southern Alaska, pretty light winds for the Panhandle. Southwest flow there across the Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast. 
and turbulence wise, occasional moderate chop there, especially along and north of the Brooks Range out to probably Kivalina Point, Hope Cape, Lisbourne. Eastward there across much of the Arctic coast, but uh, conditions improving as you head over toward Kaktovik and Barter Island. And not too bad south of the Brooks Range all the way to the Gulf of Alaska. Should be pretty smooth conditions, even for small aircraft. Moderate turbulence again showing up out over the western Aleutians, spreading to Atka. And after the break, uh, hangar flying, I'll return with a look at the ice edge and the marine forecasts. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health here in Anchorage. We appreciate Alaska Public Media for their support of hangar flying, and we appreciate you for watching. Sometimes in aviation, it gets concerning and even depressing hearing about the lack of people interested in aviation and the pilot shortage. I'm very happy to bring you a ray of sunshine into that news and introduce a brand new pilot to you this evening. We are honored to have Miss Melanie Blado, who may just be Alaska's newest pilot. Melanie, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Hangar Flying. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Tell us why you decided to get a pilot's license. So I went out with a friend of mine who invited me to Telkeetna for dinner and he said, how about I fly us there? And I said, sure. And so we went and we had dinner and on our way back, this was in September, late September, uh, he let me fly his plane for a little bit and I just thought it was really fun and interesting. And I've been a lifelong Alaskan, born and raised, and I always kind of thought about flying because there's just so much of our state you can't see from the road and I've pretty much seen it all now. So I thought, well, maybe that's something I want to do. So I contacted a flight school and I booked a discovery flight and was hooked and two days later said, okay, sign me up, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. So you didn't go about this in a typical way at all and you had a compressed schedule. How did that work for you? Yeah, well, I decided that once I make a decision, I was kind of the person that once I make a decision, I want to do something. And so I decided to dedicate myself full time to um, becoming a pilot in three months. Uh, I knew nothing about aviation. Uh, I, I have a funny story. I went up on my discovery flight and my uh, instructor said, OK, turn to the left. Over there is your left aileron up. And I was like, what's an aileron? <laughs> I didn't say that, but in my mind, I was like, oh, huh, I better look that up. And so that's about how much I knew about airplanes when I started. And I just really wanted to learn something new, a new skill and a new challenge. So I decided to do ground school self-study and then take flight lessons at the same time and try to um, get my pilot's license in three months. And I did it in 89 days. Wow, that's impressive. So you made it a goal to fly at least twice, three times a week? Three times a week and then towards the end because um, in the winter the weather can be variable. I was scheduling four to five days a week and probably getting up two to four days a week. Um, and I think that was important to me because I thought um, like with learning new sports or dancing or any kind of thing that's uh, like involves physical skill or muscle memory, it's good to be consistent with your practice. So I tried not to let more than two or three days go by without flying. And I found that helped me keep things consistent uh, with my training. That is one thing we see um, a lot of people get set back when they have to take a break between yes. flying. So I think um, to the best of your ability, um, you really took advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, so what was your um, biggest challenge in learning to fly? So I think my biggest challenge was learning to land. I think maybe as a new pilot, uh, I had figured out how to take off pretty quickly and I started getting air maneuvers, but I felt very comfortable in the air, high above the ground, and was uncomfortable <laughs> approaching the ground at rapid speed. <laughs> and so learning to uh, learning the skills around that, uh, learning to be comfortable with it, and learning to, to practice all of that took me, um, probably that was probably the thing that took me the most um, practice to learn. Uh, were there any special um, keys or ideas that you used to help uh, get your landings down? Um, I think what I did was just a lot of repetition. Um, so I just did a lot of repetition and um, I learned kind of a formula for it. I did a lot of practice. I did my training at Merrill. So one of the things that was helpful in learning was there was a lot of streets to follow to learn um, your flight pattern. Sure. Um, so I got really good at being able to do left-hand traffic landings, which meant that later in my training, I had to spend a lot, a lot of time doing right-hand traffic landings. <laughs> but just, just getting the landings down, I think for me it was just repetition. 
Yep, and after about maybe six or seven lessons, it finally started to click, so, yeah. You had mentioned that it was easier um, learning to fly in the winter. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that is? Well, one of the things that I enjoyed about the winter was I think in general there's a little bit less traffic, so it's, it's, less, in, it's less intimidating. Um, and then also uh, one of the things that you read about when you start doing your ground studies is density altitude. And um, it's kind of an, it, it's very conceptual and theoretical when you read about it, but when you learn to fly in Alaska in the winter, the density altitude at zero degrees Celsius and minus 15 or 16 is really different. And so what I appreciated about it was that you could, uh, given that I started late in the fall and finished in January, uh, you could really tell the difference and you could feel that in the air. So it took that theory and made it very practical. So that was one good thing about the winter. And the other thing is that it's just beautiful oh, <laughs> and it, easy to get in your <laughs> night requirements. <laughs> That's true. You don't have to stay up till all hours in the morning to Correct. do it. <laughs> well, Melanie, congratulations. It's been great having you on the show and we will look forward to having you back next time. We're going to talk about what your future plans are. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. This program is sponsored by the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media. I hope this has brought back some memories for you pilots out there. And if you're thinking about learning to fly, I hope this piques some interest. Until next time, fly safely. Welcome back, uh, sea ice analysis. Southerly winds, so uh, starting to retreat again, uh, mostly south to north here and of course on into Bristol Bay accompanied by the much warmer temperatures there and uh, probably will continue that trend until the uh, weather pattern shifts around and changes. On to the marine forecast, west-northwest pretty light 10 knots tomorrow, northwest 15 on down the coastline. Lynn Canal, Glacier Bay, northerlies at 15, same thing for Stevens Passage, northwest 20 knots for uh, Clarence Strait with four foot seas. And then those become northerly, pretty light down to 10 knots there, gradually increasing as you go north, 15 knots central inside waters, 20 knots there for Lincoln Canal and Glacier Bay. Out along the coast, uh, mostly northerly, 15 to 20 knots with more of a westerly component there up along the uh, north coast. And Prince William Sound, small craft advisories, east, east or northeast, 25 knots, southerly is 25 to 30 knots here for the North Gulf Coast with those 12 foot seas, 30 knot winds, south, southeast, barrens, on down across Kodiak Island. Shelikoff Strait though, just 10 knot winds, southwest 20 for Kamishak Bay, and east, northeast up to 20 for Cook Inlet. Wednesday's outlook, uh, Cook Inlet all the way down to Shelikoff Strait, we've got northeasterly winds at 20 knots with four to five foot seas. Northeast 20 also on the east side of Kodiak Island, a little more northerly for the Barren Islands. And then kind of light variable winds here for the North Gulf Coast, especially in this eastern zone, just variable 10 knots there. And Prince William Sound, small craft advisories. Bristol Bay, north 15, small craft advisories for the Alaska Peninsula, west northwest 25, 10 to 14 foot seas. Castle Cape to Sitkanak, northwest 20, seas 14 feet. Switch it around to southeast on Wednesday with the approaching front, 20 to 25 knots, seas 9 to 10 feet. Bristol Bay on the uh, fairly light winds, east 15, northeast 15 there up towards Sitkanak. And for the Aleutians, in come the storm warnings for tomorrow, 50 to 55 knots out here with 12 to 31 foot seas. Of course, the heaviest seas and wind out probably west of uh, Kiska Island. Near storm force winds arriving here for Adak and Atka, southeast 45 knots, small craft advisories, and then kind of a light wind day comparatively for the Fox Islands. And Wednesday shaping up something like this. We've got now gales out of the south for the Aleutians, uh, kind of picking up here to the west as another system approaches. Small craft advisories there for the central Aleutians as looks like the main frontal boundary will push east of the area there with those 45 knot winds as you head over to Nikolski, then dropping back for an Alaska Island down 230 to 35. And now for the southwest coast, southwest, 10 to 15 knots, 20 knots of the Pervolos, 12 foot seas there. St. Matthew Island, southwest 30, uh, good for brisk wind advisories. Pattern extends right on up to St. Lawrence Island, and actually on up to the Bering Strait. 
And then for Wednesday, southeast winds, 30 knots for St. Lawrence Island and brisk wind advisories here out along the entire southwest coast. Minimum gales in the forecast for the Pribilofs out of the southeast and almost a storm force wind for the northern Bering Sea and from St. Matthew Island westward. We're calling it 45 knots at this time, seas up to 22 feet. Arctic coast, brisk wind advisories, central and east coast all out of the south, 25 to 30 knots. Gale warnings west side all the way down to the uh, Bering Strait with those 35 knot winds. And then for Wednesday, coming down considerably, 20 to 25 here, strongest from Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, southwest turning west on the central coast to 20 knots, westerlies 25 to 30 on over to Demarcation Point. This area possibly could be a gale, have a gale, I mean, not, could be 35 knots, uh, which would be a little higher than 30 knots. <laughs> And then for tonight, uh, this low continues to pull northward. So the winter weather st or advisory storm or the winter storm warnings will be ending from south to north here, lingering through tomorrow afternoon, actually up there along the Western Brooks Range, but improving down to the south. The front weakens and pushes eastward, but will hold on to enough moisture for a winter storm warning west of the Parks Highway in the Susitna Valley for uh, uh, up to, I guess, 15 to 20 inches of snow and uh, lighter amounts, possibly nothing, over toward the Madnuska Valley. Mixed rain and snow here for southern Alaska, especially the Kenai Peninsula. Next storm out west, again bringing the storm force winds and gales eastward, but nicer over the eastern Aleutians, and this system uh, hangs on to the western and northwest part of the state, but the low pulling off conditions eventually improving up there, and then some snow here with that weak low over the barren islands, up across the Kenai Peninsula, and fair over the panhandle. Next day, sunny for the southeast coast. Fair over the interior, strong high pressure. Wind and snow, or just wind and rain, pushing into the central Aleutians. Thank <clears throat> These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. If you're interested in serving on your local federal subsistence regional advisory council, the deadline to apply is Friday, February 3rd. Call 1-800-478-1456 for more information.